a guest house. We're just we just have it in our backyard. It's a mobile home, and we don't you know when the kids come over, they stay there, right? You know, you all know. So I uh, again, having worked with the city of Fresno for or, or the county or the city for like 14 years, uh, the city was updating their development code. And I said, well, let me go talk to them about making these, you know, legal accessory dwelling units. And slowly but surely, over a couple uh, month period of time, I took the mayor and council members out to their shop, seeing them being built. And so they had a touchy feely experience with, you know, tiny houses. So anyway, they make a long story short, they uh, proposed an ordinance and it was really a good ordinance uh, allowing backyard cottages as ADUs, uh, no parking, whatever, if it's under 400 square feet, you know, perfect. Except they didn't realize that because these are on wheels or are considered RVs, they wouldn't be legal. So I picked up the phone and called a couple council members and the mayor and I said, hey, why are you cutting out one of your own employers, you know, one of our tiny houses. Don't you like those? Oh yeah, we love them. We love the tiny houses on wheels. And uh, I said, well, your ordinance doesn't allow it. What do you mean it doesn't allow it? And I explained to them about the RV. Well, it was on for council approval the next day, the whole ordinance. And so the council members went to the mayor and they all sat down and said, yeah, we want to do this. What can we do? So they picked up the phone and they called me about an hour later and said, will you write the amendments and we'll put them in tomorrow to get approved? So quickly I went online and I made up. <laughs> and thank God I, I, I have to salute uh, a lot of the work that was done by the American Tiny House Association. They had online, you know, all of the definitions of you know, get the DMV approvals and, and so forth of what a movable tiny house, you know, was. So I wrote all the criteria, et cetera. And basically what I did is say, yes, RVs, conventional RVs are still illegal except for this little niche. And to simplify it, if it looks like, tastes like, smells like, acts like a real tiny house, it just happens to be on wheels, it's legal, right? So I wrote it, gave it to them. The mayor submitted it as her amendments to the ordinance code the next day. Well, so within 24 hours, my ordinance was law. Right now, I'm sure all of you can do that in 24 hour period of time, especially if you listen carefully to my presentation, you'll be able to do that. But um, so, you know, I, I was just helping out my friends. And so I come back and I said, hey, now it's law. You can, you know, these uh, now can be you can live legally in these in Fresno. And Pat and uh, Nick Mosley said, Dan, you're gonna be a tiny house rock star. And I said, you're full of crap. What in the hell are you talking about? <laughs> well, sure enough, it goes viral nationally and my email and phone, et cetera, started ringing off the hook about how did you do that? What can you do, et cetera. Pretty soon I'm getting calls saying, will you be the chapter leader for the American Tiny House Association for California? So uh, over the past two years, I've become Mr. Tiny uh, for California, and, I, and I'm trying to retire. And uh, so anyway, that's how I got into the tiny uh, business. But it also stemmed from you know that desire to provide affordable housing, and and uh, tiny houses and tiny home on wheels, and certainly as ADUs, is one of the best ways of doing that. Uh, so as I said, I'm the uh, California chapter leader of the American Tiny House Association. It's good to be here, and let's go to the next slide. Uh, what we're going to present today are tiny tools. There's a little toolbox uh, that you'll need to start a campaign to create change in your local community for legal tiny home living. And um, and what's important is is, is a toolbox. I grew up. My dad was a craftsman, and he, you know, he ever watch a craftsman work a lathe and so forth and carve, you know, woods, etc. Well, you know, they have a, their whole little bucket of tools they use to do different things. Well, the same is true when you're dealing with the political world, the government world, you know, whatever is, you you have to learn your craft. You, there's many different tools that you use in order to create change, to create a you know product. You know, um, my main tool as a craftsman was a sledgehammer. 
And it was, uh, wasn't too good at that, but that's not one that you necessarily want to use too much with local government officials, even though that can help at times. But there's a many other, we're going to learn a lot of different tools, things that you'll have in your tool belt that you can call on and use to affect change. And trust me, change is the hardest thing to do, whether it's the corporate world or the government world. Change is difficult. Give me an example. I used to do lobbying at state legislators. To, to pass a bill is a very time-consuming, difficult process. You've got to get through all the committees, etc. To kill a bill is easy. I can tell you a thousand ways to kill a bill. But there's only one way of passing a bill. It's called getting enough votes to pass it. Simple. You've got to count. To kill a bill, I can just have, I can talk to a committee member and put it in a desk drawer and it never comes up for a hearing. Or I can kill it by amending the heck out of it. Change is very difficult to do, to actually get it implemented, to get it passed. People that are against you to kill it have the easy task. So you got the tough task to make uh, change. Let's go to the next slide. Uh, like anything else, when you're starting to work with uh, government officials, whether it's state, federal, local government, etc., you need to focus in on what is it that you want. And today's discussion is about amending local jurisdictions, municipal codes to permit movable tiny houses to be ADUs. That's our little niche. Go ahead. Yes. Yeah. It, it means accessory dwelling unit. It's the second unit on a lot. But you can only have one if you own the house where it is. Yes. The property owner where the ADU goes must live in one of the two units. Okay, so are you going to talk about other things, other ways to make it legal as well? Uh, it's not everybody. Well, no. In each city, and we'll get to this, each city is different. For example, I believe in the city of LA. An investor can own the property and rent out both. They don't. What if you only own the home, just a tiny house? Can, can we talk about how to get legal with the other things that On your own separate lot? On, in somebody else's backyard. Yeah, well, that's what we're going to talk about. Well, they're renting it. All right, because there's, there's many different ways of doing it. We'll, uh, I have 53 slides, and we'll be getting to a lot of different pieces of this, and trust me, there's a lot of permutations on how this works. And I've worked with enough cities that I've come up against everything from, we don't want them to be Airbnbs, to, uh, you know, we, we don't want X, Y, and Z. So we'll go through that. Anyway, the first thing you have to do when you're working with local government, what is it that you want to accomplish? If you go in there scattered, oh, I just want to make tinies legal. They, what the heck does that mean? Right? I'm trying to focus in on ADUs, and the reason is it's the simplest one to get passed. If you can't get that passed, to hide one of these in someone's backyard behind the main house, you're certainly not going to get one in as a standalone unit and a little development. All right? So I call this getting the camel's nose in the tent. <laughs> right? Pretty soon, the, you know, once we get this and people start seeing these in backyards and they're, they become acceptable, people understand they're not a conventional RV, it's easier than to go to the next step. So like anything else, whether it's tiny houses or whatever, focus in on what it is you want to accomplish. Right? And so that's our discussion. Just a little plug for the American Tiny House Association. It's a picture of Amy, who's the president of the American Tiny House Association. This is Tessa, who's the chapter leader down in LA in California, and that's obviously me. And this is a picture taken right after we made a presentation to the Mayor's Affordable Housing Task Force in LA. It's about a year ago, right, Amy? About a year ago. And we're that close now of getting uh, uh, tiny, mobile tiny houses to be legal in the city of California. I mean, in the city of uh, Los Angeles. And um, it's already been to a couple council committees twice, been referred back out to the 
uh, Planning Commission, then goes back hopefully this fall to become law. But we're in there talking and being accepted by the local government officials of providing professional, factual information on how to do it. And, you know, explaining to them the nuances of this. Next slide. Okay, today we're going to talk about these five things, and I'm going to leave you with the bottom one. We're going to talk about understanding 